so much. So, President Zelensky, dear uh, Vladimir, it's a great honor and privilege to welcome you uh, back here to the NATO headquarters. Uh, and, to, and to return the warm welcome you gave me when I visited uh, Kiev uh, just a couple of uh, uh, weeks ago. Your leadership, the bravery of the Ukrainian armed forces, the resolve of the Ukrainian uh, people continues uh, to uh, impress uh, and inspire all of us. And, uh, as you know, we will stand by you, provide support to Ukraine, uh, because uh, this is really important uh, for the whole of uh, NATO. Um, NATO defense ministers uh, will uh, meet today and uh, tomorrow. We will, of course, address uh, Ukraine. We'll meet in the US-led uh, Ukraine uh, contact group, uh, where we will mobilize more support, coordinate our military support to Ukraine. We'll meet in the NATO-Ukraine Council, that we established at the Vilnius summit uh, that will further strengthen our relationship and help uh, uh, Ukraine move towards a NATO membership. Uh, we will also uh, tomorrow uh, meet uh, and address deterrence and defence. We agreed new defence plans at the Vilnius summit and now everything is about implementing uh, those defence plans with 300,000 troops on high uh, readiness. We will also address NATO's missions and operations, including our presence in uh, Iraq, helping to prevent ISIS uh, from uh, returning, and also our presence in Kosovo. We have seen new, uh, increased tensions there, so it's important that NATO has increased its presence in Kosovo. Then we will also address the incident uh, in the uh, Baltic uh, Sea, uh, with the damage uh, caused to uh, uh, critical uh, undersea infrastructure. Uh, I spoke with President uh, Sauli Ninisto and Prime Minister uh, Kaya Kalas yesterday, and we are in close contact. The important thing now is to establish what happened uh, and uh, how this could happen. If it is proven to be a deliberate uh, attack on uh, NATO critical infrastructure, uh, then this will be, uh, of course, serious, uh, but it will also be met by a united and determined response uh, from uh, NATO. Uh, and, uh, uh, and tomorrow we will also be briefed by the um, Israeli uh, Defence Minister, uh, Galant, uh, on the situation in Israel. Uh, allies condemn the horrific uh, terrorist attacks on innocent civilians uh, in, in Israel over the uh, weekend. And uh, we are looking forward to uh, the briefing from the, uh, the Defence Minister. So once again, uh, dear uh, President Zelensky, dear Vladimir, welcome to NATO. Your fight is our fight. Um, your security is our security, and your values are our values. So we will stand by Ukraine for as long as it takes. Welcome. Thank you so much, Secretary General. First of all, thank you so much that two weeks ago, I think you've been uh, to give, and uh, it was a very important meeting. We spoke about priorities for Ukraine, for defending how to go, how to survive during this next winter for us is big, big. One of the biggest challenge, what will be, but anyway, we are preparing, we are ready, and now we need some support from the leaders. That's why I'm here today. Thanks for the invitation. Of course, I'll have possibility to speak and address to all the ministers of defense on the platform. Rammstein is so important, about 50 representatives of minister of defense and their teams and ministers. It's so important. We will speak about the priorities, how to push Russia out. It means out of the, our native land, and it means we will stop the war. Yes, and uh, we'll speak about it. And uh, you mentioned, Secretary, that tomorrow you'll speak about the situation in Israel. So also there will be some signals from, from us, from Ukraine. Of course, we are in the war, so we are in the war, so we understand what does it mean terroristic attacks, such victims, tra tragedy. My, my Recommendation, if I can use this word, my recommendation for the leaders of the world. I remember the first days of our full scale war. It began from terroristic attacks from Belarus by missiles, then Russian army, and you know that was the biggest tragedy what we had. And so many dying people, and so many deaths, so many. And uh, it's so, it was very important not to be alone. 
very important. And it can help to save your nation, people, save their lives. So my recommendation to the leaders to go to Israel and I think to support people, just people. I'm not speaking about any institutions, just to support people who've been under terroristic attacks, people who are dying now. It's very important. Unity is more important than to be alone. It's more strong. It's very important. That, that's what, what can I say about, about it. Sometimes we are thinking how to prevail or how to stop the war, how to manage something, dialogue with Iran or Russia and etc. Sometimes we are thinking. I think we have to think oppositely. We have not to give possibility for aggressors even to think about the Third World War, the new wave of aggression, the new big tragedy. That means if there is a big political support of the people, this means unity. That's why I recommend to go there. Of course, if uh, the Israeli side will be ready. Сегодня я приехал на Рамштайн. Я, я, I have to answer in English. Yes, why I came? I said, I said already. It's so very important that there are priorities. Air defense systems, defending shield. It's not just basic words. We have very concrete things, and we need them in very concrete, you know, in very concrete geographic points on our land to save energy network, to save people, to save grain for uh, transit grain, uh, for, to save these routes for Africa, Asia, for the world. So it's, it's important that long distance missiles or long distance weapon, doesn't matter how you call the problem, how, how, how to get it. Yes, because you need this, especially for the one reason, to push Russia out of our land. And I think these two things are the most important. And the third thing, how to defend. Just to stay each day and defend. It's not about counteroffensive. Counteroffensive is one direction. But you also have to defend because opposite you, Russia, big, big army of these terrorists. That's about artillery. Just speaking about artillery. Three very concrete things. Kiev independent, please. Kiev independent, please. I think she, 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 no, she is supposed to have the question. About, about EU, I'm so sorry, no, no. Yeah, 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 very quickly about EU. I, I, I don't know, maybe we'll, we'll meet with President Michel or, or I, I will see what, what will be today because everything is very quick. But I will be happy if we will have this plan. Our teams will connect. But anyway, we had meeting. Uh, so some days ago with President Michel, we spoke about it. Almost everything is ready from our side to open negotiation. So we, we, we've done almost everything. Sorry, Kiev independent, I think. Okay. Yeah. Uh, Secretary General, uh, Ukrainian soldiers... And it's true that Kiev is independent. <laughs> Thank you. I am from Kiev. Uh, Ukrainian soldiers on the ground cite a severe lack of ammunition, particularly mortar bombs, uh, that makes it even more difficult to wage a counteroffensive. What are NATO countries planning to help Ukraine? And how soon can we expect a rapid supply, uh, rapid increase in supplies? And why has it been taking so long for NATO countries to increase the production of ammunition to match the needs. And sorry, and Mr. Zelensky, I have a, a what are the most critical weapons that you need, your country needs to uh, waste, to, to have better results on the counteroffensive? Well, so first of all, we need today to mobilize more support to Ukraine. Uh, and as President Zelensky just said, this is about air defense, it's about artillery, it's about uh, ammunition. And, uh, and I welcome the new announcement we have just uh, heard over the last uh, couple of days from Romania uh, and also from uh, Germany. And I expect uh, more NATO allies to make uh, further announcements uh, today for uh, more uh, support to Ukraine because we need to sustain and step up uh, their support. Uh, air defense is critical to protect uh, the cities, uh, the, the, the economy, uh, the critical infrastructure of Ukraine, uh, and that helps them to, 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 to help themselves, because then the economy can function, then, uh, then, then things can work in Ukraine, and that will help uh, the Ukrainians to also produce, uh, to trade, uh, to function as, as, uh, as a normal country, and that will uh, increase their ability to finance and to provide uh, also ammunition uh, themselves for the uh, the, uh, the war. What we are seeing now is that President uh, Putin 
is preparing once again to use winter as a weapon of war. Uh, meaning uh, attacking uh, uh, the energy system, uh, the gas infrastructure. We need to prevent that uh, and with more advanced and, uh, and, and, and increased capabilities for air defense, we can make a big difference. NATO allies has stepped up production. Um, we have now 2.5, 2.4 billion in what you call framework contracts for increased uh, ammunition production, uh, out of which 1 billion is firm uh, contracts. And we are constantly working on ramping up production to enable Ukraine to uh, continue to fight uh, this just war and to continue to liberate the land. Secretary General Olmen Stan said long this. We'll see. We'll have a meeting with Prime Minister. I hope we will speak not only about F-16. We also have to think how to live during the war. It means the reconstruction. And there are some voices in the world that we don't have money to help Ukraine in reconstruction. The answer is very quick. You have assets. Russian assets. If they destroyed us, we can use this money. Let's find the key to have this Russian money and spend them on reconstruction of Ukraine. That is one of the main things what I want to speak about with uh, Prime Minister Kroll. President Zelensky has to attend so many much. important meetings, so now we need to end this. Thank, thank you, you so much. much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. 
What do you expect from I'm sorry. Uh, what do you expect from today's meeting, especially uh, on Israel Hamas war? Well, I anticipate we'll receive an update on um, the, the the situation there. It, it, it appears to be continues to be quite volatile, and, and I'm sure we'll receive an update. And also, there are a number of steps that that, that we are all taking. Is, is, every nation is taking in order to secure the safety of their citizens who are, are, are currently in Israel. Uh, Mr. Zelensky is here. He will take part in your meeting. So yes. the expectations and can we expect some new packages of aid and what about F-60s coalition? Yes. Well, of course, President Zelensky was in my country in Canada just a few weeks ago uh, where we announced a significant new contribution of $650 million in light armored vehicles and armored uh, medevac vehicles. And today we'll also be announcing some additional uh, winter uh, supplies, some additional uh, ammunition from our country. And, and, I, and I know, first of all, the, the president will, I'm sure, provide us with an update of the, the current military situation in the Ukraine. And then there'll be, as, as the, the UNDG always does, we'll have a robust discussion on how we can help them. The question about, uh, um, um, do you think that war against Ukraine and war against Israel is one war, is one, it's a part of one global conflict, or there are two different wars? Well, well, certainly we are concerned about the, the, the attack that occurred in Israel, but it appears to have been an incursion of, of a terrorist organization that's gone in and, and killed innocent uh, people and children, and, and, and of course Israel has every right to defend itself. Um, and in that regard, it is somewhat similar to the situation um, in Ukraine, but they're not the same. The, the, Ukraine has been invaded uh, by a, a, a foreign country, and the, the illegal invasion by Russia of, of the Ukraine um, is, is a, 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 a very serious conflict, and, and we are engaged in uh, providing them with as much assistance as they require. How much are you concerned some of the leaders from Iraq, Syria, Lebanon, Iran said uh, if NATO and the USA supporting Israel, and then they will support Hamas. 
Well, I, 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 I'm sure that there are all sorts of, uh, there's a great, a great deal of work going on on diplomatic channels. I know my country is involved in, in, in some of those diplomatic discussions. And at the same time, I think we all recognize that Israel has a right to defend itself um, from, from this incursion and, and from the, the, the murder and kidnapping of their citizens. Sweden is not part of the alliance yet. What importance does Sweden have for the defense of Northern Europe? Actually, as, as an Arctic nation ourselves, we, we are very interested in working very closely with Sweden um, in, 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 the, in the far north, and, and Canada supports uh, Sweden's uh, application and ascension in, into, in NATO as well, and we are, uh, we are going to continue to work with our NATO allies. Turkish and Hungarian counterparts. There are, uh, there are ongoing discussions with, with all of our NATO uh, counterparts, and I'm sure those discussions will also take place today. Sorry? Back, back to Ukraine. Now yes. that the U.S. might uh, divert their attention, do you expect Europe to step up the support to Ukraine? Well, first of all, I don't think that the, the United States, in all my, our conversations with our American allies, uh, their attention and their support for Ukraine is unwavering and, and resolute. And, and I anticipate that that will continue. Um, and at the same time, we, we know that there are other conflicts in, in the world, particularly in Israel, that is deeply concerning to, to all of us. And, and the United States will be there to support them as well, as, as, as I understand. All right, thank you all very much. Have a good day.
για την επέκταση του αγωγού εφοδιασμού καυσίμων των χωρών μελών της Συμμαχίας της Ανατολικής Ευρώπης από το Φελκερό στην Αλεξανδρούπολη και Βόρεια. Επιβεβαιώνεται έτσι η ελληνική επιλογή, η Ανατολική Μακεδονία και οι δύο Σιθράκοι να γίνουν κόμβος εφοδιασμού των χωρών μελών της Συμμαχίας. Από εκεί και πέρα η συζήτηση για την Ουκρανία γίνεται τη στιγμή που υπάρχει η ανάφλεξη στην Μέση Ανατολή μετά την βάρβαρη επίθεση της Χαμάς κατά του Ισραήλ και του ιδίω του αμάχου πληθυσμού. Θα ήθελα να πω ότι η Ελλάδα αντιλαμβάνεται πλήρως τις θεμητές προσδοκίες των Παλαιστίνων μέσα στο πλαίσιο των αποφάσεων του Συμβουλίου Ασφαλείας των ΟΕΕ. Όμω οι βάρβαρε επιθέσει όπω αυτή τη Χαμά ενυποθηκεύουν ακριβώ αυτέ τι προσδοκίε. Η Ελλάδα έχει σαφώ τεθεί δίπλα στο κράτο του Ισραήλ σε αυτήν την τραγική περίσταση. Αλλά θέλω να πω ότι αυτό πρέπει να το κάνουν όλε οι χώρε τη συμμαχία μα. Το ΝΑΤΟ είναι μια συμμαχία αξιών. Δεν είναι μόνο μια αμυντική συμμαχία. Και η βάρβαρη επίθεση της Χαμάς προσέβαλε ακριβώς αυτές τις αξίες που το ΝΑΤΟ πρέπει να υποστηρίζει. Τα ανθρώπινα δικαιώματα, την ανθρώπινη αξιοπρέπεια, την δημοκρατία, την ασφάλεια, τη ζωή. Πρέπει λοιπόν όλες οι χώρες, επαναλαμβάνω, όλες οι χώρες της συμμαχίας να έχουν μια σαφή καθαρή θέση στο θέμα. Den fase, der handler om, hvordan kan vi så få doneret flyene, så de bliver operative i Ukraine. Og der er det jo vores forventning at vi øh, i første kvartal af 2024 vil være i stand til øh, at donere øh, vores øh, første bidrag af kampfly øh, til øh, Ukraine. Og der er der et meget, meget stort arbejde for at sikre, at øh, den måde, de skal operere på, den måde, de bliver beskyttet på, de steder, flyene skal stå, at øh, ukrainerne er i stand til at, at håndtere det. Yes. Ja, det er rigtig ked af i den situation, som, øh, som er øh, i forhold til Sverige. Det er klart, at øh, vi nu har et øh, akut behov for, at Sverige øh, bliver øh, en del af NATO. 
og at øh, vi ikke længere kommer til at vente på, at, øh, at Sverige står i en standby-situation, hvor de ikke ved, øh, om de så øh, er medlem af nato eller Der blev givet nogle meget klare tilsavn på topmødet øh, i, i juli måned, og det skal leveres. Og det er selvfølgelig også vigtigt, at, at, at Tyrkiet lever op til, til det, der er givet af tilsavn, nemlig at de kommer til at ratificere øh, aftalen i parlamentet hurtigst muligt. Og der er det også min klare forventning, at det skal ske her i oktober måned. Truls Lund, kan du sige noget mere konkret omkring, øh, jeg forstår, der er en, øh, en donationspakke på vej i forhold til ammunition, 60-siffret millionbeløb, så vidt jeg har hørt. Kan du sige noget mere konkret om, hvad der er på vej fra Danmark? Det kan jeg ikke på nuværende tidspunkt. Det er rigtigt, vi sidder og arbejder på en øh, ny øh, donationspakke. Øh, og det er også klart, at et af de elementer, der vil give god mening øh, og tage en politisk øh, beslutning om, det vil være yderligere ammunition. Det er jo ikke mere end nogle få dage siden, at øh, vi kunne offentliggøre, at vi har erhvervet øh, en grund øh, i Elling øh, omkring Frederikshavn øh, med henblik på at lave en mulighed for ammunitionsproduktion i Danmark. Det er klart, det er på den længere bane. Det, vi arbejder med nu, det er på den kortere bane. Og vi ser også på, hvordan vi kan øh, tage initiativer sammen med andre lande i forhold til øh, at indkøbe ammunition sammen og lave donation til Ukraine. Og hvad med flyene? Hvornår kommer de første fly, kampfly afsted til, til Ukraine, og hvor mange? Ja, altså det er mit øh, klare mål, at øh, vi øh, i første kvartal øh, 2024, øh, som det ser ud nu, øh, marts eller april, vil være i stand til at, at sende de første fly afsted. Men det afhænger også af, øh, hvordan træningsindsatsen går i forhold til de piloter, der skal efter- og videreuddannes, og ikke mindst det støttepersonel, der skal til for øh, at servicere flyene. Og så skal jeg også lige høre det her C-130-fly. Øh, hvornår kan de hente de danskere, der er i, øh, i Israel? Ja, jeg har som sagt truffet beslutningen her til morgen, øh, og nu er der nogle øh, praktiske ting, der skal på plads i forhold til overflyvningstilladelser og lignende. Øh, og derfor forventer jeg, at øh, vi i løbet af kort tid, det vil sige timer og ikke dage, vil være i stand til, at c 130 flyet vil være tilgængelig i Israel. Nu er der jo også, kan man sige, at selvfølgelig Ukraine er på dagsordenen dag, men krig, eller krigen mellem Israel og Hamas kommer også til at fylde. Er du bange for, at den kan komme til at overskygge for det engagement og den støtte, der har været blandt NATO-landene til, til Ukraine? Jeg tror, man må sige, det er meget klart, at den ulykkelige situation, som vi ser i Israel, og det voldsomme terrorangreb, som Hamas har rettet mod primært den israelske befolkning, er jo fuldstændig uacceptabel. Og det kommer selvfølgelig også til at optage politisk opmærksomhed. Det siger sig selv. Det er jo vigtigt, at det her det ikke på den måde kommer til at skygge for, for de vigtige beslutninger, der skal tages i forhold til Ukraine. Men, men det er jo en ustabil verden, vi lever i, og derfor kommer amerikanerne selvfølgelig også til med god grund at bruge noget af deres opmærksomhed på, hvad der sker i Mellemøsten. De har jo også besluttet at sende et hangarskib til Mellemøsten med henblik på at være til stede i området. Skal vi vende militær grej den vej, Troels
att släppa in så här. Framförallt så handlar ju det om att luftförsvaret utgör då en rygg i raden och är ute till Alfarsvalen och de jobbar ju 24-7 för att upprätthålla det. diskussioner och efter detta också det ska ju ses som ett brett sätt att ta flera initiativ nu för att stärka den här uppgiften. Zdravi. Znano je, da je v prejšnjem mandatu prejšnja vlada zmanjšala prisotnost na Kosovu. Mi smo to zdaj spet povečali oziroma povečujemo in sklep vlade je bil, da se poveča do 100 vlada do 100 vojakov. Slovenski vojaki so tam predvsem kot nekinetične sile, se pravi, ali po domače povedano, neobojne, se pravi, mirovne. In zagotovo je Zahodni Balkan prioriteta Slovenije in zato tudi povečujemo prisotnost tam. V okviru teh napetosti še kaj dodatno? No, kot sem rekel, usmeritev vlade Republike Slovenije je, da se prisotnost krepi in to tudi delamo. Pa glede same misije oziroma kvorja je treba kaj spremeniti njegove naloge v luči teh zadnjih dogodkov? Slovenija izvaja svoje naloge tako kot doslej in krepi svojo prisotnost in to je ključno. A glede na to, da je danes presenitljivo tukaj tudi predsednik Ukrajine Zelenski, srečanje bo zdaj tudi te tako imenovane Ramštajn skupine. Imate morda v nahrpniku za Ukrajino kaj dodatnega? In sploh kako bo zdaj slovensko pomočil Ukrajini? No, Slovenija seveda Ukrajini pomaga že od vsega začetka, tako z humanitarno pomočjo, kot tudi z vojaško pomočjo in s podporo Ukrajini bomo nadaljevali tudi v bodoče. Tako da Slovenija je tukaj pokazala, da je solidarna z Ukrajino in da se zaveda pomena tega sodelovanja, mednarodnega sodelovanja. Je pa ta Ramštajn skupina, to ni skupina v okviru Zveze NATO, to je Posebna skupina, kajti NATO kot tak ne dobavlja orožja oziroma nima donacij, ampak zgolj posamezne države članice. Ampak ali bomo znotraj te skupine Ramštajn kaj ponudili na novo, recimo danes v bližnji prihodnosti? Ta hip je težko reči, kako se bo naprej odvijalo. Dejstvo je, da Slovenija je pomagala veliko in seveda ostajamo zvesti svojim zavezam. Mogoče še zadnje vprašanje, kako dalje smo s projektom osem kolesnikov? To se pa zdaj že kar vleče. 
No, ne bi rekel, da se vleče. Glede na to, da smo lani takoj, ko je vlada začela z delovanjem izstopili oziroma začeli izstop iz okarja in zdaj po letu dni pravzaprav ne moremo govoriti, da je to neka dolga doba. Mi smo pripeljali ta proces do te mere, da bomo lahko izbrali tistega, ki bo najbolj ugoden. Je pa pri tem, seveda, kot sem že večkrat povedal, tudi treba pregledati, da po domače povedano vse štima. Mi si ne moremo privoščiti spet enega nakupa, ki bi imel sence dvomov in ki ne bi bil ustrezen. Tega smo imeli v zgodovini že preveč. In te nakupe treba pač izvajati tako, da bodo potem tudi operativni. In želimo dobiti vozilo, ki je operativno, ki ni prototip, ki zadostuje kriterijem. In zato tudi ta izbor razumljivo poteka zelo potanko, kajti preveč, kot se nekaj smo v zgodovini že imeli primerov, ko ni bilo tako. Zato mesec ali pol leta ne pomeni nič. A pa ste morda dobili že kakšne odgovore od tistih nekaj držav ali pa ponudnikov, ki ste jih izbrali? Proces teče. Proces teče in mi kot naročnik seveda točno vemo, kaj želimo in tisti, ki bo uspel to zagotoviti, tisti bo na koncu tudi izbran. Kaj pa bo zaključen ta proces? Ja, to je pa odvisno od mnogih faktorjev in je treba, kot sem rekel, vse pretehtati, tudi vse certifikate, vse tehnične podrobnosti, tako da proces mora teči svojo pot in ne smemo tukaj nekaj hiteti, ker vsako hitenje pri takih stvarih se lahko na koncu maščuje, ker če vse preveriš in vse pretehtaš, je lahko še vedno gre kaj narobe, tako da smo previdni pri tem. Hvala lepa. Hvala. Hvala.
Yes, sir, over there, oh, okay. yes, you can. But here. Okay. <laughs>
One, two, test one, two. One, two, one, two, minute.
le lit par les Américains à ouais. 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 Thank you. 
Well, good morning, everyone. Uh, thanks for joining us for the 16th meeting of the Ukraine Defense Contact Group. And it's great to see everyone this morning. Let me say just a few words first about the terrible tragedy that Israel is now enduring. The full horror of the attacks by Hamas continues to become more clear and more appalling. The United States stands firmly with Israel as, as it defends itself and its citizens from this vile Hamas terrorist assault. And we will stay in close contact with our Israeli partners and ensure that they have what they need to protect their country. As President Biden has made clear, no other party hostile to Israel should try to exploit these despicable attacks. <clears throat> like any other country, Israel has a bedrock right to defend itself from terrorism and aggression. And our support for Israel's security will remain ironclad, especially in this hour of atrocity and challenge. Now, let me turn to today's agenda. By gathering this contact group again, we remind the world of our shared commitment to support Ukraine today and for the long haul. Let me start by thanking President Zelensky for joining us today. Thank you, sir. Mr. President, it's an honor to have you here. And you can see firsthand the scope and the determination of the coalition that has done so much to help Ukraine, uh, Ukraine's fight for freedom. Let me also thank Minister Umerov and the rest of the Ukrainian delegation for joining us today. I'm delighted to be here with our new chairman of the Joint Chiefs of Staff, General C.Q. Brown. Welcome to your first Ukraine Defense Contact Group, General. It's great to have you here with us. Now, this coalition continues to make history with our unity and our steadfast support for Ukraine. So make no mistake, the United States will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. And today, I look forward to working together to do even more to get Ukraine's brave defenders what they need at this crucial moment. We're here to deliver what it takes for as long as it takes so that Ukraine can live in freedom. So today, we'll discuss Ukraine's immediate requirements as it fights back against Russians, Russia's flagrant aggression. And we'll hear from Minister Umerov and his team, who will update us on Ukraine's uh, current counteroffensive. Ukraine is making steady progress forward, and it continues to liberate key terrain from the dug-in Russian invaders. This is a hard and dangerous fight, and we salute the incredibly brave Ukrainians risking their lives to drive back Putin's army of aggression. And the current battle only underscores the importance of the life-saving security assistance from everyone here that has kept Ukraine in the fight. So as winter approaches, our task in this contact group is twofold. We must continue to ru rush Ukraine what it needs to meet its ur urgent cha uh, current challenges, even as we continue to develop Ukraine's combat capabilities to ward off future dangers. So we're here to dig deep to meet Ukraine's most urgent needs, especially for air defense and ammunition. I look forward to hearing about the new support packages that many countries here are preparing. And I'm proud that the United States will announce its latest security assistance package for Ukraine, uh, valued at $200 million. It includes AIM-9 munitions for a new air defense system that we will soon deliver to Ukraine, as well as artillery and rocket ammunition, precision aerial munitions, anti-tank weapons, and equipment to counter Russian drones. That puts America's total commitment at some $43.9 billion since the start of Putin's war. And I'm proud that this coalition of some 50 nations of goodwill from around the world has rallied to commit more than $33 billion in security assistance to Ukraine. In fact, more than a dozen of our allies have committed more to Ukraine than the United States as a percentage of their GDP. Now, we're also here to discuss how to balance our immediate support to defend Ukraine 
with our longer-term assistance. The next step forward in our long-term vision will be working with our fellow contact group members to organize what we're calling capability coalitions. Now, these coalitions will be responsible for coordinating contributions from coalition members for each major capability area. We've already organized highly effective coalitions focused on Leopard tanks and F-16 training, which have marshaled resources from multiple countries. But now we're taking this concept a bit further. We're asking countries to organize coalitions focused on wider capabilities beyond just specific platforms. Just as this contact group surged capabilities to support Ukraine's immediate needs, we will also organize ourselves to coordinate our investments in Ukraine's future force. Now, we all know better than to underestimate the degree of Putin's malice and frustration. And we saw that again last week with the horrifying Russian missile strike in the Kharkiv region that killed dozens of Ukrainian citizens. And we should be ready for the Kremlin to again bombard Ukraine this winter with cruise missiles and drones. We should expect Putin's forces to cruelly and deliberately put Ukraine's cities, civilians, and critical infrastructure in their gun sites. And by turning civilians into targets, Putin hopes to break the spirit of the Ukrainian people and plunge them into bitter cold and darkness. But he will fail, and we all know it. Putin hoped to demoralize the Ukrainian people. Instead, he demoralized the Russian military. Putin hoped to isolate Ukraine. Instead, he isolated Russia. And Putin hoped to fool the whole world. Instead, he couldn't even fool his own mercenaries. So this war of aggression, in this war of aggression, nobody should assume that time is on the Kremlin's side. We stand together to today determined to ensure that Ukraine has the support that it needs for another winter of war. Unity will remain, for the beating, will remain the beating heart of this coalition. The Kremlin never predicted our strength and our unity of purpose. And the Kremlin certainly did not bargain on our continued resolve nearly 20 months into Russia's needless and reckless war of choice. So I'm inspired again looking at all the countries around this table, even while Putin is left pleading for support from Iran and North Korea. We stand together. Putin stands alone. And everyone here understands the stakes and why Ukraine's fight to defend itself matters. Ukraine matters because Putin's war of choice is a vast and urgent threat to security in Europe. Ukraine matters because Russian aggression clearly challenges our NATO allies. Ukraine matters because Russian atrocities against civilians offend our shared values and threaten the rule of law. Ukraine matters because Russian attacks on Ukrainian grain are deliberately inflicting hunger and suffering on innocent people around the world. And Ukraine matters because if great powers can invade their peaceful and democratic neighbors with impunity, it will claw away the rules-based order that has made the world so much safer since the end of World War II. That is what has brought us together again. As I've said before, I continue to firmly believe that our support for the forces of freedom in Ukraine will hold fast in any season or any storm. So thanks again for being here and now, for the first time in person at the Ukraine Defense Contact Group, let me give the floor to President Zelensky. Mr. President, welcome again. We're delighted to have you here. Thank you so much. Nice. Thank you so much, Mr. Minister Olsen. Thank you for your support and leadership. It indeed feels like a true warrior is, a, is leading the Ramstein team. Thank you so much. Dear ministers, dear generals, I'm grateful to each of you for your tireless work and for the strong joint decisions you have 
made for us, for all our people. Thank you so much. General Brown, this is the first time uh, you are participating in a Ramstein meeting, and I, I think it is very, very symbolic, given your military background as a combat pilot and an F-16 pilot. And I'm sure that together we will do many good things to defend freedom. Yes, Mr. Secretary General, and I thank you for your faith in Ukraine, for your confidence that Ukraine will be among the allies in NATO. Ladies and gentlemen, next Monday will mark the 600th day of our resistance to Russia's full-scale aggression against our people, against Ukraine. And today, no one can say for sure how many more days we will have to defend our independence and to defend our identity. But we can already say several things which are, I think, important. First, Putin will not achieve Ukraine. Second, Russia cannot afford a new arms race. And third, democracy can win this battle. And it is necessary not only for our country, but for every nation, for the whole world. Our time is not the time for, for the slavery of nations. You all know that Moscow's ambitions have never been limited to Ukraine, and we all want these ambitions to be defeated in Ukraine as soon as possible. And this is the best opportunity, so that we don't have to look for shells and supply tanks to other countries in Europe, Asia, Africa, that the Russian dictator may try to turn into ruins or seize into his crazy empire or zone of influence. And I know that NATO is ready and capable of protecting its members from external aggression. And may we never have to experience uh, this in, in reality. And I know what steps can protect Europe and the world from the spread of Russian aggression. And I know what is needed to speed up the, ju uh, the just end of this war. Let me emphasize a just end, full protection of our sovereignty, full restoration of our territorial integrity, full guarantee of Ukraine's security after this aggression. And we are now in a special situation on the front line, you know, and in a situation where it is important to put pressure. And without any pauses, it's very important, without any pauses, you will understand the principles of effective defense. And it is the defense that does not leave the enemy a chance to rest, recover, choose any other tactics. tactics. Russia has lost the initiative for today, and we are putting pressure on it. We are. It is Ukrainian courage and your support that determine what is happening on the battlefield, and most importantly, most importantly, what will happen on the battlefield. And although the occupiers are still trying to storm our positions, although our defense and counteroffensive actions are very difficult, it is still Ukraine. It is our soldiers who determine the course of events. And Russia cannot handle this war on its own. You can see it. It needs Iran. Russia cannot succeed without the Shahids and other help. It needs North Korea. Just imagine, for the first time in its history, Moscow has gone to Pyongyang to bow down. And the Russian Black Sea Fleet is escaping escaping our naval drones and missiles. Traditional buyers of Russian weapons see how superior the weapons made by the free world and used by Ukrainians are. Russia is slowly but surely withdrawing from various points of geopolitical fractures in the world because it lacks its own strength. But at the same time, at the same time, it still has enough resources to incite conflicts and turn them into full-scale tragedies. And this is happening in the Sahel, and it can happen even more painfully in Israel and in the Middle East as a whole. We must not allow this to happen. 
We can prevent it. We have to put even more pressure so that the aggressor weakens faster and does not have time to adapt to our, to our pressure. And we need to make sure that Russia is heading for defeat and does not even attempt to claim anything else. One of the most vital, one of the most vital battles here is the one against the Kremlin's key tool, its greatest perverted pride, the pride of the terrorist. And last winter, Russia wanted to turn it into a weapon against us by destroying our all of our power plants and supply network. And I'm grateful to all of you, every country, every leader who helped us with air defense and uh, energy equipment. It's really what a lifesaver for, for us, for all of us, for our people, our children. And obviously this winter, Russia will try to repeat those tactics, but with certain conclusions and greater terrorist efforts. Please know that even during the attack on Israel, terrorists target one of the largest power plants in the region. And until last winter, when Russia relied on these tactics, other terrorists had not done so in such attacks. And of course, our task now is to get through this difficult time through this winter, but in fact, the real power of this task is fulfilled, is much greater, greater than just getting through the winter. Air defense is a significant part of the answer to the question of when this war will end and whether it will end justly for, for Ukraine. And I'm confident that it can be so, it will be so, Everyone can see what the protection of the sky gives. It is guarantee that there will be normal life in the cities. There will be an economy. There will be people. People, long range air defense can also ensure the functioning of our corridors in the Black Sea and the Danube region. Air defense will ensure that Russian jets will not be able to approach our Ukrainian borders. And therefore, it will solve the issue of Russian guided bombs. And we all need this kind of push now, a step forward in our defense, air defense. For Ukraine, this will be a victory of life, and this is vital. For Russia, it will be a failure of its key strategy, the strategy of terror. What will it have left by this? And we need to protect people. We need the opportunity to live and accumulate economic activity. And we need normal exports. Grain is the key to global food security, Ukrainian grain. And then there is metallurgy also and other goods of our exports. It is economic basis of life. We need children to be able to study at schools, not only online, and we need people to live, not only from one ear alarm to another, but based on their plans for days, weeks, better months. When this happens, the majority of our people who have found temporary refuge abroad will start to come back. Millions of Ukrainians I'm sure the stronger we are socially and economically, the more powerful we'll be in, in the military sense. We will be able to ensure the work of a greater number and capacity of defense industries in Ukraine. We will be able to depend much less on the assistance of our partners, and we will be able to provide more support to the front line. Dear friends, we must win the winter battle against terror and uh, we can win it, and along with it, we can win the battle for how and whose terms this, this war will end. Ukraine can survive, and it will, it will survive. However, it is important to take the weapons out of the hands of the enemy. What is Russia's strength? Let's be honest. 
only a defect that they can destroy lives. Russia is not capable of doing anything else. Is it a security donor? Really? No. A supporter of development? No. A political pool? No. A source of economical growth? No. A terrorist? Yes. Yes, that is the only thing. And that threatens Ukraine and many other nations. We need to get this instrument out of Russia's hands, the instrument of terror. And the answer is air defense and other types of weapons, the list of which uh, we'll discuss and my team, of course, will share with you. And above all, please remember that this will not only help to bring a just end to the war for us, but also keep the war away from you, from your borders and borders of your allies, from the alliance. Missiles and drones will not fall in Romania and Poland or elsewhere if they cannot overcome the protection of the Ukrainian sky. Terrorists like Putin or like Hamas seek to hold free and democratic nations as hostages. And they want power over those who seek freedom. The terrorists will not change. They just must lose. And that means we must win. We do. It requires patience. It requires steady and continuous support. We need to take the right steps, steps that, that, that save lives of the people for real. Vital steps and strengthen their defense significantly. Air defense is a must, and I'm sure you heard me. Thank you for your invitation. Thank you very much for your attention and for your common big support during all these days, weeks, months of full-scale war. Thank you and your nations. Slava Ukraine. My name is Mara Carlin. I'm the Acting Deputy Undersecretary of Defense for Policy, and I will be the facilitator for, this, uh, for today's Ukraine Defense Contact Group. I would like to now turn to NATO's Secretary General Stoltenberg. Thank you. Thanks so much, uh, President Zelensky, Secretary Austin, Minister Umarov, and General Brown. Uh, distinguished uh, colleagues, uh, it's a great honor to welcome you all to the NATO headquarters. Uh, Secretary Austin, uh, Dear Lloyd, uh, thank you for your leadership. You have been instrumental uh, since day one in garnering international uh, support to Ukraine's uh, war effort. President Zelensky, your leadership, the heroism of, of the Ukrainian, Ukrainian armed forces, forces and the soul of the Ukrainian people have impressed us all. When, when President, President Putin, Putin launched his full-scale invasion of Ukraine last year, he thought Kiev would fall within days and Ukraine within weeks. He was wrong. The Ukrainian armed forces have exceeded expectations again and again. You have taken back 50% of the territory seized by Russia since February last year. You have inflicted a high cost on the Russian forces. Russia is degraded militarily, weaker economically, and more isolated politically. But there is no sign that Putin has given up on his ambitions. On the contrary, Russia has increased attack on critical infrastructure and is preparing again to use winter as a weapon of war. So we must continue to step up and sustain the steady flow of weapons and ammunition to Ukraine. The stronger Ukraine is on the battlefield, the stronger they will be at the negotiating table, and the sooner this war will end. And we need uh, to put in place a long-term framework that will ensure history does not repeat itself. Therefore, all allies agree that Ukraine will become a member of NATO. At our Vilnius summit in July, Allies removed the requirement for a membership action plan. 
We introduced a program to make Ukraine's armed forces fully interoperable with your future allies. And we established the NATO Ukraine Council where allies and Ukraine sit as equals. So there, Lodomir, again, it is a pleasure to welcome you to NATO. Your fight is our fight, your security is our security, your values are our values. We will stand with Ukraine for as long as it takes. Thank you. Thank you, Secretary uh, Stoltenberg. We will now pause as the press departs. Thank you all very much.